Well, Jane is trying to get her 18-year-old niece, Betty, who now lives with the Aces, to meet some young fellows. But Betty's such a serious type, she thinks it's a waste of time. Last night, Marge's boyfriend, Neil, brought out a young man named Mickey and persuaded her to go to a dance with him. Betty went, only after Neil said he would go, too. Betty's developing a crush on Neil. We find Mr. Race, Marge, and Jane in the living room just after dinner. There goes the telephone, and Jane answers it. Listen. Hello? Yes? Uh, Betty, just a minute, I'll call... Uh, who is this? Oh, hello, Mickey. Uh, this is Betty's aunt, remember? Oh, how are you? Oh, Mickey calling, Betty? Well, looks like Betty's doing all right. Oh, I'm just fine. Uh, well? Oh, Neil told you to call up and ask how Betty is. <laughs> Neil, stupid wish. It looks like Neil's engineering this whole thing. <laughs> I see. <laughs> well, she's just fine. Hold the phone there and I'll call her. Oh, well, did you have a good time to dance last night? Jane, why don't you stop pestering that kid with those silly questions? Hi, oh, dear. Uh, what did you say, Nicky? No. Oh, well, she knows Neil better than she does you. But after she gets to know you better, she'll pay more attention to you. Mm. Oh, well, she was just excited, I guess, maybe, because she doesn't go out with fellas very much, and this is her first dance. And I'm sure if you give her another chance, she'll get... Jane, get off that phone and call Betty. Yes, I know there's a lot of pebbles on the beach. Uh, uh, just a minute, Nicky, there's so much noise going on here. Uh, hold the phone a minute. Yeah, why do you keep talking when I'm talking on the phone? I can't hear what he's saying. Jane, who's that phone call for? Betty. Well, why don't you call her? I'm going to, but I'm just trying to explain to him why, what Betty. What a fine job you're doing. You don't tell a fellow that a girl hasn't any other boyfriends and that it was her first time out. You tie her up as if every boy in town is showering her with attention. Oh, I see what you mean. That's cute. Yes. Yes. Too late, you see it. Oh, it's not too late. Um... Hello, Missy. Mm -hmm. She's off again. Uh, what do you say? Oh, yes, uh, a lot of pebbles on the beach. Well, of course, if you like pebbles. After all, Betty isn't a pebble that anybody can walk on. Not with all the boys in town just raining her with attention. <laughs> right. That's marked up from showering. Well, I guess you've got <laughs> lots of pebbles, too, when you come to think of it. Uh, more fellas have been calling up today. I just don't know if I'm going on horseback. Uh, hold the phone, Missy. I'll see if she's in. Mm. She might have slipped out the back way with somebody. Hold the phone. Yes, yes. <laughs> Not so loud, Mark. He'll hear you. Well, he heard you, and if he's still hanging on there, nothing will discourage him. Well, it sure would, Mark. It did? Yes, it sure got him off his high hat. He sounded very anxious when I said that. Yeah, I'll bet. He's only calling her because Neil told him to. I'll bet he's sorry he got mixed up in the whole thing. Oh, not so loud. You know how telephones are. No, how are they? They're just fine. Yeah. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I better call Betty. Betty, tell on Betty. What did he say about her paying more attention to Neil and to him? Oh, last night the dance. He said she didn't even dance with him. She danced once with Neil, he said, and she hardly paid any attention to him. Well, I thought she couldn't dance. That's what she told us, but maybe said she danced with Neil. Oh. What is this for Neil has over us, sir? <laughs> I don't know, but isn't that awful? Going out with a fellow and then not paying any attention to him. No wonder she never has any thoughts to go out with. No, oh, well. Betty, telephone. Well, I'm afraid Mickey's not her type, Jane. Oh, dear, not in front of the telephone. <laughs> Can I hear you? <laughs> oh, Jane. Oh, here she is. Uh, telephone, Betty. For me? Who is it, Neil? Neil? No, it's Mickey. Oh, him. Yes, he called up to find out how you are. Oh, tell him I'm quite dead. Tell him you're quite well. Oh, Betty, tell him yourself. He called for you. I have nothing to say to him. Daddy, what's the matter with you? You have to talk to him. I don't see why. Why? Because he told you. You have to answer the phone when it rings. It's impolite not to. What did he think? Oh, I don't think he'll notice it. Now, Betty, was there a way to talk after he took you to the dance last night? I went with Neil. Yes, but Mickey was with you. He happened to be alone. That's what I said. Oh, will you two stop quibbling? I didn't quibble. Oh, Betty, I think you better talk to your young man. My young man? Aren't you being a little childish, Mark? Well, uh, maybe we both are. How's that? Well, I said mean that trying not to be. Now you talk to him. It's bad enough that he had to tell me that you didn't pay any attention to him last night. That's no way to do. When you go out with a fellow, you have to pay attention to him. Like laughing at his jokes and things like that. My goodness, didn't your mother teach you anything? I was with Neil. Oh, why you keep saying you were with Neil? 
I was here when he was going to go with you and Nicky. You don't think that Neil would go with you without Nicky, do you? He might. Oh, really? Why not? Oh, I don't know. I was only asking. After all, yours is only a platonic friendship, isn't it? Well, I wouldn't know about that. I'm a stranger here. Um, didn't Neil tell you that? Daddy, answer the phone. He didn't have to. Then he didn't tell you that. No, but I can certainly oh, see what... Oh, Daddy, answer the phone. I will not. Then he's waiting to talk hey, to you. Hey, now, wait a minute. What's going on here? What's the matter with you? Yes, and I really was getting Marge's attitude concerning Neil. <laughs> what attitude was that? Oh, you sound so possessive. Oh, really? I'm so sorry. Well, somebody's got to talk to him. Mm-hmm. Of course, Marge, if you want to make this a contest. Oh, no, not at all. I'll step out. Step out? No, Nicky. What's your stepping out? I'm trying to see if you stepped out of Oh, not. what's going on here? Now, hold the phone a minute, Nicky. Now, look, Betty. I don't know what silly idea your young mind is thinking up, but if I were you... Oh, it's a job jelly Well, somebody's got to talk to her. Well, I wish somebody would talk to Nicky. Yes, all you have to do is answer the phone and talk to the young man who called you. I never saw such an argument start out of a simple telephone call. I'm not interested in talking to that young man. We have nothing in common. I don't even know him. Well, how can you say that? You went to the dance with him last night. I went with me at meals. But Nicky took you. He just happened to be along. <laughs> well, this is where I came in, I believe. What do you mean he just happened to be along? He was the main one. He happened to be along. Why would Nicky think if he knew that you thought he was playing second base for Neil? We had nothing in common. Well, you've got a lot that's common. You could have more fun together if you only pay a little attention to him. Fun. Is that all there is to life on Jane? I think so. Oh, well, Jane. Yeah. Why, did I say the wrong thing? Well, I suppose not. It's what most everybody says. That's why it's such a comfort to find someone like Neil. Neil? What about Neil? He's the only one I found who realized there's something more to life than just a surface living. <laughs> oh, of course, you'd laugh at me. I'm not laughing at you, but see, I'm laughing at me. And I expected you to laugh at both of us. Oh, it's your team, is it? Oh, isn't that awful? Betty, for a girl, I suppose I have a little more than average school fans. You certainly developing a schoolgirl crush on a fella that's just, just kidding you along. Daddy. Well, Aunt Jane, what about it? Do you mean to my help it? Do you mean would I plan it? Do you mean... Well, let's stop asking each other questions. What do you mean? <laughs> I can plan anything to go around to my <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> It just strikes me as funny. Well, it strikes me as the silliest thing I ever heard of. What do you get these ridiculous notions? A girl that's supposed now, to have... Now, suppose you let me talk to the young lady. Oh, all right. Talk to her. I can. not Well, can't you talk to me? Well, no, no, Betty. Why don't you stop being silly? Oh, of course you think it's silly. Just forget about me for the minute. Yeah, forget about everything and just answer the phone. Now, be sensible. You were trying to do you a favor. That was all. That's why he brought me to here last night. And I suppose that's why he came along with me. Of course it is. He just wanted you to go out with somebody. Oh, of course you think that. Yeah, yeah, what do I do about this phone? He's holding the receiver. Oh, let him hold it, I guess. Well, if he can hear everything that's being said here, I'll bet his ear burns. Well, uh, here, let me have that phone. What are you going to do? Uh, nothing. Uh, just let me have it. Now, don't say anything that'll make him think. I think. won't. I won't. Give it to me. Uh, Betty, are you going to answer that phone now? Sure, she is. I certainly will not. Hello, Mickey. Uh, this is uh, Mr. A. See, Uncle Ace is talking to him. I don't see. Uh, hold the phone a minute, Mickey. I told you, Aunt Jane, I'm not interested in that meat. Oh, Betty, be your age. Yes, don't be Neil's age. Well, what the heck? Uh, just a minute, Mickey. There's, uh, <clears throat> there seems to be a little trouble finding Betty. Now, look here, Betty. Uh, they're going into a huddle. Can't you see through this? It was all planned for you. Neil was to bring out this young man for you to meet. Yeah, that's the way it was. They're coming out of the huddle now. Oh, that's the way it was, was it? It's just too bad it didn't turn out that way. Oh, somebody's offside. Now you're being childish again. Oh, call it anything you want. Yeah, good call is foolish. Yeah, they're calling signals, Mickey. Well, I don't see how you could have gotten so messed up, Betty. We didn't mean for you to start thinking about me, y'all. So it's just too bad it didn't turn out the way all of you planned. Yes, yeah, it is too bad for you. <laughs> and it's your own fault. There's a 20-yard penalty. Well, I told you about Neil and Mars long ago. I don't see how you got so mixed up when Neil and Mars have been going together since. Now, don't drag me into this, Dad. But you are. She can't do that to you, my best friend. If I hadn't told her about you and Neil, that would have been a horse of a different color. Oh, uh, they changed games on us, Mickey. They're at the post now. <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, 
Stop it. What? Why, I'm so serious. What do you mean you don't know what I'm talking about? I'm giving you a detailed account, play by play, of what's going on here. Oh, dear, what are you doing? I'm just keeping Mickey company. Well, what are you saying at the post and all that stuff? Let, let me have that talk. Uh, just a minute, Mickey. Mrs. A is coming up the bat. Hello, Mickey. She's out. Yes, out at home. <laughs> <laughs> and Mickey's out without having even gotten to first base with Betty. But Betty is certainly head over heels that way about Neil. How Neil talks his way out of that, we learn when next we meet the Easy A 